you a tour of Flipgrid from the educator side. So to sign into Flipgrid, you can go to flipgrid.com. I like to click educator login because you can log in directly with your email address. This page is what your educator portal looks like. If you happen to log in and you see a page that looks like one of your assignments for your students, just go to the top right, click your name, and click educator dashboard. That's how you get in. This is your teacher page. Your groups are your different classes. If they're green, that means they're active, ready to go. And if they're red, that means only you can see them. To create a new class, you just click create a group and you type in the group name and you click student email. Um, that's way they can sign in through their email. They don't need a username, they don't need anything else. Once you have your classes set up, you can go to your class and the topics are your lessons or your assignments. So if your lessons are green, that means that the students can access them. If they're blue, it means they're frozen. The students can access it, but they can't add any more responses. And if they're red, that means hidden. Only you and your account can um, see it, which is pretty helpful if you want to kind of pre-plan some lessons or you want to have some sub plans ready to go so that you just have to literally click active when you're out and the topic's ready to go once you share it to Google Classroom. The way you add a topic is just like how you add a new class. You click add a topic, type in the title, the prompt, you can literally add anything to this. You can upload a pre-edited video, a YouTube video, or an image. You can also record a video directly on Flipgrid, which is really helpful when you're working on a Chromebook. Once you're done with all of that, you're just going to click Create Topic, and you're ready to go. So when you want to share a topic with students, you just click the blue Share button. You have a lot of options, but I like just using the direct link. I'm finding the more teachers that use Flipgrid, um, if, especially if a student bookmarks Flipgrid, it's going to whatever they bookmarked at that time, whatever assignment, whatever teacher, not necessarily the assignment that they want to. So I'm trying to get my students in the habit of always going to Google Classroom. So I copy the link, I go over to Google Classroom, and I click Create Assignment, and I link it right there. This way students always have the same process to get to it and I know that they're accessing the exact assignment and link that I want them to. So that's literally how you share it with students. It'll look something like this once you're done and ready to share. On your teacher account, if you click the topic, you'll see your lesson content and any responses you might have. So the cool thing about responses is you click it, you can watch it. In details, you can add a public video or a public comment. That means that whatever you're producing there, everybody's able to see. You can have the settings so that only students can see their own videos. You can also have the settings so that all students can see all videos. I, unless a student asks me to turn off their setting, like to have all my videos um, at least viewable by the class so that everybody can kind of learn from each other and give each other positive feedback. But you can also shut that down. In the feedback section over here, this is like the secret portal for teachers. You can grade it right on Flipgrid if you wanted to. I tend to use Google Classroom. You can write your comments. Once you write comments, you can email feedback. Once you do that, Flipgrid will actually email your comments directly to students. Weathersfield did unlock Flipgrid um, from student accounts, so you will be able to student um, send students email feedback from Flipgrid. Thing I really like about this feature is if I go back to the topic, it does a check mark when I've created feedback for a student. So that way I know that I've already seen that video and I've already left feedback. This is really helpful when you keep getting new submissions, especially late submissions. Um, so I highly recommend using that feature. Anyway, on the student side, just a quick um, view of that. This is one of my lessons. The kids can watch me in a video. You can add goofy emojis and different filters to make the kids really interested. Um, and literally all the students need to do after they watch your video is click record a response and record their response. At the end, it'll ask them to take a selfie. They can edit it with emojis, borders, filters, whatever they want or nothing. And then they submit it. That's it. The only other thing that I always tell my students is that Flipgrid and Google Classroom don't really communicate with each other. So if you do do it as an assignment on Google Classroom, you need to teach them to do the marked as done because just because they do their response on Flipgrid doesn't mean that Google Classroom is going to tell them that they're done with their assignment. They have to tell Google Classroom that they went on Flipgrid and did it. Anyway, I hope this is helpful. I am totally available to answer any questions you might have. Good luck using Flipgrid.